David Braben has left the CEO position of Frontier Developments, but what does this mean for Elite Dangerous? Meanwhile, the next chapter in the Elite storyline, Aftermath, is about to begin. And there's also some new information on the instancing issues between Horizons and Odyssey. It seems possible that things are about to get very sticky. So let's jump in and take a look at all of this latest information for Elite Dangerous. So, after very nearly 30 years, David Braben is no longer CEO of Frontier Developments. He's been replaced by former CCO Johnny Watts. Now, David Braben is not leaving Frontier, far from it in fact. He's taken on the position, the newly created position of President. He will also be staying on as a board member and incidentally is the largest shareholder for the company, so his decision will still carry a lot of weight. The big question then for all us players of Elite Dangerous is, what will this decision mean for our game? Well, that's hard to determine at the moment. After all, David Braben has been very heavily involved in Elite. He co-created the franchise all the way back in 1984 and has been the head of Frontier ever since Frontier was founded. He was also very much the face of Elite Dangerous ever since it was first announced back in 2012 during the Kickstarter days all the way through to around about 2017-2018 when he seemed to step back a little bit. That means that over the previous years, it's been a bit of a mystery just how much David is actually involved within the day-to-day -day and overall arcing decisions of Elite and where it's heading. Of course, if you're to listen to rumours on the internet, then the thoughts on Braven's involvement within the franchise vary wildly. They range from him having no involvement whatsoever, all the way up to micromanaging the entire product from behind the scenes. But that is the nature of internet rumours, the short of it is that no one really knows. That said, from what little I hear, Braben has still been involved within the decisions for the game up until very very recently and may well still be involved as well. But moving on to Johnny Watts, Watts has been involved with Frontier for 20 years now. I believe his origins in the gaming industry started all the way back with the Sensible Soccer. But yeah, over the years I've spoken with Johnny Watts quite a few times and I can say that he has always been very, very passionate about Elite Dangerous. He understands the game and has always been very receptive to feedback. And of course, in his position as the Chief Creative Officer for Frontier, he has been very much involved in pretty much all the games that Frontier put out there. What am I saying here then? Well, I'm by no means saying that David Braben moving away from the CEO position is a good thing for Elite Dangerous, but I'm certainly not saying it's a bad thing either. The bottom line is that I've seen some concerns out there that David moving away from Elite is, means well, it's the end for the franchise and that bad things are going to happen. From my experience, I think that will definitely not be the case. If anything, I suspect things will simply carry on as they always have been. Whether or not you think that that is a good thing, well, that is going to be very subjective and will likely depend upon how you feel things have unfolded and developed over the past few years. Either way, that is the long way of me saying that no, I don't believe this is bad news for the game. Now, moving on. Aftermath is the next big chapter in the Elite Dangerous narrative. The previous chapter, the Azimuth Saga, come to a conclusion very recently with the release of Update 13. People will likely be well aware now that this update had quite a dramatic effect on the Thargoids and how they're interacting with players. There's now a very aggressive set of Thargoids within the game and it's likely this is going to impact the storyline moving forward. Meanwhile, players are finding out other features within the game that were released with the update, specifically relating to Guardian Relics. As I mentioned in a previous video, it seems very likely at this point that a new weapons grind is about to begin at some time in the not too distant future. It also seems more than possible that a new type of Thargoids, maybe a Thargoid mothership, or maybe just another type of Thargoid interceptor, is about to auto make an appearance very soon. Either way, Frontier have made it clear that the Elite story didn't end with the conclusion of the Azimuth Saga, but is going to continue onwards with the uh, Aftermath. And this kind of brings us nice and neatly onto another subject, and that is Horizons of 4.0. Currently, uh, those of you playing Horizons will be playing on the first different version, and that's version 3.8. Horizons of 4.0, meanwhile, uses the Odyssey codebase. Now, from what I understand, it's this code base that is dependent, that is required for many of the narrative features that we're now seeing making their way into Elite. Specifically, all the goings-ons within the HIP-22460 star system. 
Now for me, right here, I'm really hoping that this new version of the code with Horizons 4.0, which incidentally everyone will have access to very soon, is going to improve the way players can interact with the game. Now I really don't want this to be a false hope, but it's my hope that the 4.0, the Odyssey codebase, will allow Frontier to deliver new types of scenarios and new ways for players to interact with all of that. Now this may not just be a false hope because after all, Frontier have hinted, pretty much openly suggested, in fact, that the new code will allow Frontier to do just this. You can see that text on the screen right here. But as with pretty much everything to do with Elite Dangerous, there's no way of knowing how this is going to work from this particular point. As always, with this type of thing, only time will tell. But do let me know your thoughts and feelings on the, in the comment section below on this particular subject. Do you think that Frontier will introduce new ways of interacting with all the various scenarios with the new codebase changes? Now, there is some more news related to this. And just to recap here, as you may be aware, every current Horizons player is playing on a version 3.8. Very soon now, everyone is going to be upgraded to Horizons 4.0. This means if you don't own Odyssey and just currently play Horizons, you're about to choose between the Horizons 3.8 client and the 4.0 client. Today, Frontier revealed a little bit of information about how this is going to work. Currently, Horizons players cannot instance with Odyssey players. So if you're playing on Horizons 3.8, you're about to instance with players who are in Odyssey. This, we all hoped, was going to change with the release of Horizons 4.0, but it turns out this is not going to be the case. The way it's going to work is that none of the different versions, the different client versions, will be able to instance with each other. And that means if, even if you load up Horizons 4.0, you'll not be able to instance with Odyssey players. This seemed like a very strange move, and the forums did react to it somewhat, and Frontier did clarify the position, confirming that this is exactly how it's going to be. But they didn't explain why the reasons are for this. Some people have speculated that it's down to the PEGI rating for Horizons being different to the PEGI rating for Odyssey. Personally, I'm not convinced of that, and either way, Frontier have not confirmed whether or not this is the case. Further, Frontier have stated that they will clarify the position and give a bit more information in the coming hours or the coming days. So another post, another bit of information that we should be looking out for, I guess. It's a very strange position to be in. After all, a few years ago, as forum member Old Duck pointed out, people were asking for crossplay between consoles and PC. But today, here we find ourselves not even about to crossplay on the same platform. A very, very strange position for an online live service game to be in. We'll see how it goes, I guess. Frontier have said that although this is the current situation, it's not guaranteed that this is the way things will remain. And if things do change, they will let us know. Meanwhile, before we hear all that inf extra information, do let me know your thoughts and feelings on this in the comments section below. That then uh, brings us to the end of this video. As always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys and girls next time.